So, uh, out of curiosity, not a, not a full room, half, maybe quarter of the room, how many people here have used Ceph before? Almost everybody. Okay, cool. How many of you are still using Ceph today in production? About half of you. Okay. And how many of you spent time benchmarking Ceph in the past? Three, four people, five people. Okay. And how many of you enjoyed benchmarking Ceph? One person, okay. <laughs> we, okay, cool. So today I'm going to be talking to you about Cybench, which is a new way to benchmark Ceph. Um, it's an open source project written in Go. And uh, I'm going to give you a bit of background about the project and kind of why we did it. Um, but first, let me talk to you a bit about why benchmarking is painful. So it's painful for a number of reasons. Um, you need to run uh, tests many times. You need to um, run tests for a minimum length of time in order for it to be a good test. You need to, um, there's lots of variables, loads and loads of variables, especially with Ceph. Um, when you make changes to a workload, you need to be uh, only changing one of these variables at a time as you go through the tests, so you can kind of figure out and diagnose what, um, what changes are having what impact. And then when deducing those results, even if you've only changed one variable at a time, there's a good chance that more than one thing has changed and you just didn't realize. Um, so that's always fun. So with Ceph specific, uh, specifically, uh, benchmarking becomes even more complicated. The first reason is um, Ceph has many interfaces. So we're not just interacting with Ceph one way, we're interacting with it in many ways. You have block, file, object, um, or you could talk directly to the Rados API. Um, with Ceph, you have massively varying workloads. So um, the, the different Ceph protocols all have different workload characteristics. And so you need to take different approaches and uh, kind of measure each uh, uh, approach in Ceph independently, figure out, okay, well, so for RBD, this actually works really well, but for S3, this is terrible, or whatever. Um, so that's kind of another issue. Uh, another issue is that distributed systems need distributed benchmarks. So um, because Ceph's performance scales linearly as you add OSDs to the cluster, um, you also need to scale your benchmarking tooling in a very similar way to make sure that you're not limited by your benchmarking architecture. So um, the drivers or worker nodes that you're using to benchmark, or client nodes as some people in benchmarking world call it, um, need to not be the bottleneck. You need to have enough client nodes to uh, fill up uh, the Ceph pipe. Um, so another issue is that uh, workloads can be invisible to you um, because many people that are operating Ceph are like, oh yeah, I'm operating this as a service and they go and talk to their customers and they say, hey, what are you using Ceph for? And their customers don't tell them. They just say, we want an object store or we want a file store and they don't say what, because in many cases their customers don't know what they're going to be doing. So a lot of people that operate infrastructure are service providers and so the eventual need is kind of opaque. So you kind of figure that out over time. Um, that's a bit of a challenge. And then um, another issue with Ceph, uh, which is always fun, is that um, the background work in Ceph can also get in the way. Ceph's doing all this stuff in the background, like uh, uh, opaque deletes, it's doing uh, scrubbing, it's doing uh, self-healing kind of uh, checks. And those things are things you have to be aware of as well when benchmarking Ceph to make sure that um, when you look at changes you've made, you haven't inadvertently introduced another issue. So, um, so at first, you know, I work for a company called Softiron, and we use Ceph as a core part of our product. And, um, and it, our last uh, kind of product, Hyperdrive, which was an appliance for Ceph, we had this um, deployed in dozens of sites um, uh, across a you know, very large customer base, loads of different workloads, and we needed a way to figure out um, when we architect a new hyperdrive cluster, what's that going to look like for a customer? And today, uh, we offer uh, a similar product, which is a, a full end-to-end -end cloud, and uh, we have the same problem, which is uh, a customer is going to be using Ceph in a certain way. How do we estimate what type of hardware to provide them? Are we providing NVMe? Are we providing SSD? Are we providing hard disk? And um, in, in some cases, kind of what combination? So we needed to figure this out as a critical, it was a critical blocker for our business. And so we started with this tool called Cosbench. Anybody heard of Cosbench? 
also the same guy that loves benchmarking. Oh no, a few more people. Okay. Um, it's, it was originally created by Intel. It's uh, open source, written in Java. And um, Cosbench was, for a while, the only tool you could do benchmarking of Ceph with. It was targeted at S3 and object. Um, but it also did have some limited support for Rados as well. And it was originally designed also to benchmark other object stores so you could compare like your Ceph deployment to an S3 deployment or your Ceph deployment to um, Google Cloud or something, something like that. Um, so we used this for a while, and uh, you know we didn't really want to reinvent the wheel, but um, there was, there's some problems with Cosbench. The first problem is that um, the JNI is expensive. If you want to use uh, the Java native interface um, or use Cosbench to measure performance for anything other than S3, because Amazon does have a pure Java implementation of S3, but for everything else, um, it has to. Um, uh, y you have to traverse this native interface, and that's very expensive. So it completely defeats the point of doing benchmarking from Cosbench. The other, there was a number of other problems with Cosbench, which is, first of all, it didn't really have a maintainer and didn't see any code contributions for years. So the Intel guys kind of abandoned it after a while. I guess they either moved on with their lives or stopped using it. Um, it was also using this thing called OSGI, which was this horrid... Um, uh, kind of bundle-based bundle, bundle based, uh, Java kind of, it, it was very much built as a monolithic application. And so Cosbench was originally targeting um, lots of different object protocols and that may have made sense for that, but it really was a very fragile structure and didn't really work for us. Um, so there were a number of issues with Cosbench, the you know, manual workflow, no build or install system, and we kind of uh, spent a bunch of time with Cosbench trying to figure out how can we make this better? So we tried to build it with Maven. How can we uh, package it, document it, um, kind of use it in a sensible way? But at some point, we kind of just abandoned the project because it was more effort than was necessary. So we ended up writing our own uh, benchmarking tool, and that's Cybench. So what's, what was the goals of Cybench? Cybench, um, we wanted a tool that is simple and lightweight, um, easy to read, easy to run, easy to debug so you know what's going on. We wanted it to be linearly scalable in the same way that Ceph is linearly scalable. So uh, we didn't want it to get in the way or to benchmark Cyrange itself. We want to benchmark Ceph. Uh, we wanted to benchmark all the different Ceph protocols. Um, so it, this is a tool designed from the ground up for Ceph. Um, it had to be efficient and low level. So we wanted something that lets us call out to C libraries like Rados uh, without performance implications. Um, and we wanted it to um, have similar performance to FIO, because FIO is kind of an industry standard for benchmarking, and it's pretty low level itself. And FIO is great, frankly. And so we kind of wanted to be able to look at FIO and see some, see some numbers, and look at Cybench and see some numbers, and see something that made sense as a result of doing that. Um, so um, so uh, that, those main goals. And then the final thing is that we wanted to have uh, some framework that uh, gives us control over the data that we use to run the benchmarks. So basically, we want to also control what data we're generating, not just using like dev random or something like that. Right? Um, so what, what's the architecture for this? It's written in Golang. Um, so it's almost free to call out to C. Um, it's both a daemon and a CLI tool. So you use it like a command line tool, but it's also running on your driver node as a daemon. Um, it, uh, it handles auth, so it takes the Ceph keys where necessary uh, and the S3 keys where necessary as arguments, and it passes them to the monitors of the gateways as it needs to. Um, it's multi-threaded, so uh, because it's written in Go, it's pretty easy. Um, but also, um, by default, every sidebench driver spins up um, a thread per CPU core on the worker node, and so you can control how many uh, threads you want and play with that as a, as a variable as well when you're doing benchmarking. Um, and and that, that could be useful if you have uh, for specific workloads that, that do that. Um, it does both bits or bytes. Networking people seem to love measuring things in bits. Storage people seem to be love measuring things in bytes. No one cares, divide by eight, whatever. Um, so uh, then it also has this control of ramp time, which many benchmarking tools do. So you, have, you specify an up, a kind of uptime and a downtime, and then it will, won't really measure the first three seconds or the last three seconds. Um, and then finally, um, Sidebench also is not focusing on, um, it's only focusing on the benchmarking. It's not focusing on all the setup and like talking to the monitors and 
uh, uh, capturing like uh, the data and figuring out. We figured we wanted something that just did the benchmarking, and then we ended up writing another tool, uh, which I'll talk about in a sec, called Benchmaster, and that was a tool that kind of helps you orchestrate your benchmark, run sweeps, run multiple things. So I'll talk about that in a sec, but Sidebench is just about running one workload and doing it well. So what's the architecture of, uh, of Sidebench? You can see on the right here, you've got a Ceph cluster, you've got LibRados, LibRBD, LibCephFS, Rados Gateway, LibRBD, and Lib uh, CephFS twice to demonstrate, yeah, okay, so to demonstrate the uh, file system. So there's, uh, from a Sidebench worker, you can either talk to Rados directly, you can uh, use RBD images, you can use uh, a mounted file system, you can use Rados Gateway, or you can talk, the last two are kind of native. So this is like either a native, um, file mount or um, uh, a native block device. And so you, so you could use, uh, you could theoretically use Cybench to, uh, to benchmark stuff that isn't Ceph. You could benchmark anything. Um, so that's kind of what the architecture looks like. Um, so for Librados, you just provide a Ceph pool, a Ceph key, and a monitor address. Um, RBD, uh, you, you just provide the same thing, and it, it, it handles the RBD images. Um, the one thing, so with Rados Gateway, and this was something that Cosbench did very well, is um, you don't have to worry about load balancing uh, HTTP requests or figuring out how to do HA proxy or something similar in order to deal with benchmarking S3, because it kind of, uh, every worker will talk to it, can talk to a different Rados Gateway uh, server. So there's kind of some inherent built-in load balancing just due to the fact that you have loads of workers and you can provide it loads of endpoints and then it will, it will do that for you. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so what's some of the other stuff it can currently do? Uh, you can do bandwidth limiting. So you can, uh, some customers have requirements such as, hey, we want to have 100 millisecond response time when doing 30 gigabytes a second of traffic. So this is a good way of getting latency numbers at a specific bandwidth. When you max out bandwidth, that's not always a good indicative measure of latency. So um, that's a, it's a good way of uh, limit workers from maxing out the pipe. Uh, so you get a, a really good view of kind of what latency implications is this workload going to have. It has a slice generator, so by default it generates random data, um, but you, it's not very useful when you're trying to measure things like compression or deduplication, so you can, um, you can put that random data into a buffer and then use the same data again for future workloads in order to see the impact. Um, you can do read-write mixes, so it's not just about doing a read workload, doing a write workload. You can also do like a 30-70, 50-50 split at the same time, because um, most, most workloads are going to be combined. Um, Cybench also has support for uh, individual statistics, so, um, so you can write out all of the stats from a worker, and then you can go in and like, do like statistical analysis and a whole bunch of other like, uh, kind of investigation to figure out what you want, uh, kind of what, what actually really happened if the numbers don't make sense. Um, this is uh, ends up being like really really big uh, file, so it's only worth doing if you if you're really confused. And then finally, uh, Sidebench doesn't delete anything. It doesn't clean up after itself by default. You can tell it to, but it's because uh, delete and Ceph have a huge impact on uh, performance, and they're also silent. You, it's hard to tell when they're happening. So, um, so we don't do delete by default, but you can turn it on. And then that gives you kind of a representative view if you're doing loads of deleting. Um, so Benchmaster, Benchmaster is a small wrapper for Sidebench and also for Cosbench as well, because we kind of had a migration process moving from one to the other. Um, it's for running a series of benchmarks rather than just a single one. Um, so um, uh, it allows us to uh, kind of uh, provide a set of options that we can sweep over. So I can say, hey, go and run a workload for 1K object size, go and run a, a workload for a 4K object size, um, 16K object size, and then come back and give me all the answers. And then finally, it also writes to Google Sheets. So uh, with Sidebench, I can um, generate a Google Sheet, and then uh, all the uh, um, all my uh, uh, kind of workload data ends up in there, and that's just a very easy way to like draw graphs or use the app or collect it over time, so it's much more organized. So I want to show you guys uh, kind of what a Sidebench uh, worker looks like. Um, figure out, hopefully the conference, can you still hear me? Hopefully the conference internet uh, will allow me to do this because I'm actually just doing it on a remote machine. 
Is it here somewhere? There it is. Cool. Cool. So you can see I have this uh, Ceph cluster. It's just a small Ceph cluster that we have in one of our Berlin labs. It's backed by, um, it's actually backing a, an open stack cluster. So I could theoretically make lots of people's lives miserable if I do the wrong thing. That's fun. Um, it has 36 OSDs. It's just three nodes. Um, you can see, yeah, they're all hard disk across uh, three nodes. And they're all up. It's looking fairly healthy. Um, there, is, there is some data on the cluster, not too much, about three terabytes used. So um, that will all look pretty familiar. So um, what's Cybench? So the first thing is I want to show you that Cybench is actually running. And you know, for this demo, we're not really interested in um, like the actual numbers, like the benchmarking data, because it's a very small test cluster. So it's not really about like hitting really big numbers. This is just about showing you how it works. So here, here there's Cybench is running as a daemon. And that's kind of how, how it works. And then we also have the command line tool, um, which has a fairly big help, uh, help menu. But basically, uh, for any one of the Cybench um, commands, I can then provide it a list of servers. And those servers will be the worker nodes. And you can run this command from any of the worker nodes. It doesn't really matter. Um, as, long as, uh, as long as it has the daemon there, it's listening. It has an API that it will just talk to, and it will, it will send out the, uh, the benchmark. Um, other things to point out, uh, yeah, you can see the different, uh, the different sections. It has a man page as well, which is always nice. So uh, some, some information about uh, kind of benchmarking uh, with Cybench specifically, some guidance, um, more detail into like every different uh, command and option for, um, for the tool. Um, there's also like a website and some information on, um, there's, there's also a website uh, which, um, uh, which will give you detail on uh, kind of how to download it and package it and stuff. Is that better? Not big enough? Okay. I hear that a lot. Um. <laughs> uh, right. So um, next we're going to do a um, uh, just a basic benchmark. So. Um, so yeah, so I've got some historical, um, let's see, commands, some of which worked, some of which didn't. So I'll run the ones hopefully to do. So here I'm going to do a RADOS run, right? So this is going to be um, uptime one, downtime one. So we, you know, it's just going to be a five second uh, workload. Um, and we're not going to measure the first or last second. I'm providing it the Ceph key, which is I'm just um, including the, the command to print the key. And then I'm giving it the monitor at the end. Uh, so let's see what happens. So very simple. We've got uh, a write stage, a uh, prepare stage, and a read stage. Um, the prepare stage was actually skipped because I didn't clean up the data, so it could just go back and read the uh, written data. Um, so um, uh, you can see that the reads were faster than the writes. Um, very simple. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Benchmaster to create a sheet. Um, and I've actually done this before. This is the Benchmaster help page. And you can see here I have. Uh, sheet create. So I can give it a sheet name and an email address, and it will create a Google Sheet and share it with me. So let's try that. Benchmaster. Oh, can't spell. Sheet create dev conf c. And then I'll send it to myself. So I've just got an email, open it up, and that's a very small spreadsheet. Uh, whoops, that's a very big spreadsheet. That's about right. 
Cool. So um, there you can see the spreadsheet. And then let me go away and run a benchmark. Uh, so, whoops. All right. Kind of juggle uh, seeing things on this screen and that screen. I lost the cursor. There we go. So uh, now I'm going to pass, um, I'm going to run a benchmark. And the sheet I'm going to provide is the one we've just created, right? So devconf cz. And you'll see here that I've got a, um, I've added a new option, which is the object size. And I've added 128, 512, and 1 meg. So we can see the different uh, speeds at these different uh, sizes. And I'm, and I'm going to make this a five second runtime as well so that it, we can actually, s doesn't take absolutely ages because it's going to do three, right? So, so I'm going to leave that to work for a bit. And as it does that, I'm going to talk, talk to you about the rest of, just go through the next slides. We can come back and review it in a sec. If I can figure out how to manage this. Okay. So, um, some of the ideas for the future with Cybench. Um, uh, so, we, we thought about doing a workload generator. So, this is something that uh, over time we realized is quite hard to map a customer workload or a Ceph user workload to something that we're going to be um, that actually creating a benchmark that represents that. And so, um, and also the invisible workload problem, we had service providers that just like, we don't know what people are running on our system, sorry, so just give us something that works for everybody. And it's like, well, but that's not really how benchmark or computers work. Um, so we wanted to have uh, something that we could kind of sit there, like a generator, and say, okay, here's the workload that's kind of been on average over the last month, and here's a benchmark for Cybench that you can run to test other potential clusters for this workload. Um, so that was something quite cool that we, we haven't got around to doing yet. Um, we also wanted to do uh, sweeps over OSD counts. So this is quite cool. Actually, I wrote a script that did this, but I never actually patched it into Benchmaster. And so the idea here was, if you want to see, like prove to yourself that Ceph, the Ceph that you're deploying is actually scaling linearly in performance, what you can do is remove a whole bunch of the OSDs from your Ceph cluster, and then kind of add them in gradually over time per node. So let's say you have 20 nodes, you just scale it back to three nodes, so you could just do a basic triple rep, run a benchmark, add in the fourth node, run a benchmark, add in the fifth node, run a benchmark, and then watch. And then if it's a linear graph, then you're happy because it's scaling linearly as was promised by Sage and the other gods. But um, if not, then you're in trouble, right? So, um, so I actually did this um, many times and it, it did work really well, but just never got it into Benchmaster. So that, that would have been nice. Um, so meta operations, so there's a whole bunch of stuff in Ceph that isn't just like running a, like reads and writes, and there's other stuff that you might want to do. And so it'd be cool to look at like um, how do you uh, measure the impact of a snapshot or, or other things. Um, there was um, support for Kubernetes. So um, obviously uh, Kubernetes has a very, fairly mature CSI driver for Ceph. Uh, it works really well, uh, both file system and block. And so it would be cool to figure out hey, um, well, uh, you know, c can we have uh, Benchmaster go away, spin up a Kubernetes cluster, spin up a bunch of pods, um, map the uh, storage class or the, kind of, uh, the persistent volumes into uh, pods, run the benchmark, spin it down, and then spit out the results, and then kind of make that a repeatable process. So that was something we, we never really kind of got around to either. Um, and then, yeah, if you guys have any ideas, um, you know, either leave an issue or uh, merge requests, patch is welcome. You know, it would be, be cool to see what, um, what you guys, uh, you know, have, if you have ideas as well. So while I've been talking, hopefully, if I can find my cursor again, we can see that this benchmark is completed. And remember, I ran three benchmarks with Benchmaster, so it would have gone and told Cybench three times, go and do this, go and do that, go and do this, and then spat out the results in the spreadsheet, and there we go. So we have um, three results. We can see they're written with Cybench, the different sizes, the time. We can see that the write bandwidth differed massively between the different three object sizes. Same with the read bandwidth. Um, seems to have interestingly gone down between uh, 
one to eight and five twelve, which seems kind of dumb to me, but probably because I did a five second run or something. And uh, yeah, that's the that's the benchmark. So uh, yeah, any questions? So uh, is your question, um, the question is, uh, can you take an FIO configuration file and use it with Cybench? Yeah, not exactly. Is there a, a similar approach? Can we, uh, not, on, not to specify every time the common line is uh, but what we find? There isn't. Um, but I actually do really want that as well because doing it on the command line is very annoying. So, um, so yeah, we can add. That, that would be a very trivial change to, uh, to add as well. It's just about, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, that's a very good question and I think we should do that. So that's another idea for the future. I'll be at a minor one. Cool. It does, it does, yeah. So, um, Oh, uh, yeah, the, the question was, is it also possible to uh, count the IOPS? And over here, you can see there is a latency value, which translates to IOPS if you multiply. Do, do. That's basically IOPS, but you just, it's just latency in, in milliseconds. Uh, cool. Any other questions? Favor? Well, so CBT, so the question was, have you finally given up on, uh, on CBT? And um, I, 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 never, I never gave up on CBT. CBT is um, a wrapper for lots of um, tools. And so um, in a way, it's kind of like the Benchmaster thing that we did. And actually, I gave this talk in, um, uh, at the Ceph, uh, one of the Ceph days a few months ago. And the guy that wrote CBT was in the room. And he was like, hey, we should talk about integrating Cybench into CBT. So uh, I think that would also be a very cool thing to do. Um, but I haven't played enough with CBT to be able to say you know, um, the, the value of like, comparing it with FIO. Or, um, or uh, I know it has support for Rados Bench. It has support for Cosbench. Um, I think it has support for another one of the Go-based benchmarking tools. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's a worthwhile thing to look at, but it's, um, it, it wasn't useful for us, for our purposes. So we wrote this very much kind of for what we needed, but that's a good question. Cool, any more questions? Well, thank you very much.